slow camel. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Right to keep going? Yeah. Oh, I see. My name is Jessica Kelly. In the year 1913, I live with my family on our farm, this not way. far from the Proserpine River. No rules! It was there after school and chores, I would run with my two older brothers, Jack and Billy, to hunt for kangaroo. My brother Jack would carry our single bullet. My brother Billy always had the rifle. They're too far away. And they're moving. Show off. Woohoo! My favorite thing after hunting was to ride with my father and brothers as we worked our cattle. My parents had built the herd from nothing, and in that time before the war, after years of struggle, they had achieved a solid prosperity. Off you go home, Jess. You've got work to do there. It's not fair. <laughs> Billy, there's an old gum down there that could do with some pruning. I don't think you'd be able to see that far, Dad. I can see that far. Hope you can see that wind going left. Bit of a heat rise. Bit of pressure there. Check it. Yeah, it's alright. Took a while, that. Right? Have a break if you want, man. I'm not a young man anymore, Jack. An old body just can't run off pride alone. That's the burden of wisdom, Billy. I'll teach you about it when you're ready. Don't get me wrong, Jack. I don't doubt your breeding. Credit to you, Dad. I'm glad I'm recognized for my contribution to this. For the record. Well, can't run on perfection alone. Billy! Sorry, Dad. That's all right, son. If you look after your tools, they'll look after you when you need them. My parents were John and Marjorie Kelly. I also had a much younger brother, Richie. We shared our farm with my mother's sister, Kath, and her only son, my cousin, Paddy. We need more bullets. Look, if I give them more than one bullet, Jess, uh, they may get careless and miss. Billy never misses. Well, then it'll stand him in good stead later. Look, if, if I give them more than one bullet, there's a fair to middling chance that one of my boys will not come home alive. What about me? Paddy, I don't have time to worry about nephews. <laughs> All right, now I'm ready for that meat. You did only shoot one, Dad. Now, come on, you pair. It was my bullet. Paddy. <laughs> oh, Larry. Mmm, <laughs> rue. <laughs> Hello, boys. If you guys get there on time, I'll save you a dance, Auntie Kath. Thanks, Billy. Oh, what about me? Well, <laughs> uh, maybe. No alcohol, you boys. Wouldn't dream of it. And so we lived. And once a year, the town would gather at the community hall. And together with our friends, we would celebrate the end of one year and the beginning of another. We have a state championship, no less. My word. <laughs> Queensland championship for rifle shooting. Any age, anywhere. The winner is William. <laughs>
How's your boyfriend? How's your girlfriend? She's Where's your mum? She's still inside talking to Anna Cat. She's always last. Dad, she's cleaning up. You're on your own, Billy. I'm sleeping my way home. <sighs> Oi, Billy. I know you asked Peregrine and Ambrose to dance with me. Well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Did you enjoy yourself? Well, yeah. Well, what difference does it make? Plenty. Do you want to ride home or not? And so we rode, away from the happiest night I can remember, into the darkness of the night and the new year, safe with my brother. I can only think back now with sadness how easily we let those days of happiness slip away. Uh, Marge, this Archduke Ferdinand, uh, why does someone want to shoot him? And it was all that simple. Some obscure European royal had been murdered and the world was at war. My brother and cousin were now soldiers on a great adventure with a promise they'd be home by Christmas. Mm. Two fat ladies. Just the way Banksy likes them. Are these your girlfriend's name, Banksy? That's her name, Paddy. Settle down, boys. 500 yards. Nice shooting, Billy. I can hit him from a bit further back than this, sir. Is that right? He could go double that, sir. Sergeant, move the truce back. 500 yards. Boys. OK, Billy, let's see how you go, eh? Paddy, number five, one shot. Incredible. It's not dead center, sir. That's true. Put it left so you'd see the hit. Oh, bullshit, Billy. Settle down. Could give you three little ducks in a row if you wanted. You're telling me you could put a bullet where you want at a thousand yards, Billy. I'd bet money on it. Oh, come on, sir. <laughs> Settle down, man. You know the Army's views on gambling? Sergeant. Oh, All right, boys. Joe, Joe, Come on. <laughs> it's on, Billy. I'll be holding that. All right, Billy. When you're ready. <laughs> that is amazing. You can keep your hat. Do we hit him? Let's knock his hat off. I don't know. I got him. Here come the doctors and nurses. Looks like we scored a hit. Big duck on pond. No, I have a look at that helmet. <laughs> what rank is that? German. Fellas, we've got to get him. Time this well, they won't even know he's been dropped from the side. You're an evil man, Jack. Waiting. Ready. Now. Wonder if they'll notice. Wonder if they'll care. Dear Mum and Dad and Jess and Richie, you'll be happy to know that they've kept us together. We're now officially a sniper team. Patty and I do the spotting, and Billy does the shooting. Dad, you'll be sad to learn that the army has agreed with Mum, and they've decided we can have more than one bullet. All my love, your loving son, Jack. Look north along our line. That's Lone Pine. Took that three weeks ago. The day after that, there were more bodies between the trenches than you could count. My God. The smell. There's a man still alive out there. 
Turk at Deep Square Leg. He's still alive. Not anymore. Mr. Bartlett, you're gonna have to sit down. You're kicking up dust. I don't like this. There's no movement. It's as if they're waiting for something. Just one photograph, lads. Smile! Hope that was a good photo, Mr. Bartlett. have become men. Hello, officers. Hello, Reg. Hello, Hello George. George. Hello. Back again. How many times is that? Seven. Sergeant Cathcart, Dad told me to come and see you about signing up. Good work, Jim. Oh, he doesn't want me to get conscripted. And I'm the man you'll be working with, George Doyle. Oh, nice to meet you. Dear Mum and Dad and Jess and Richie, it seems we've found our niche here in France. Paddy's devoting his time to building his financial empire. If the war doesn't end soon, he'll probably end up owning half of Europe. Oh, he's a smart looking fella. He can't sell that egg. Been here long, mate? He can't have that egg. Scrawny Forget bastard. It. What's the deal with the egg? You don't have an egg. You're not selling that egg, Paddy. Mustard gas has killed every hen in France, maybe even Europe. So it's the last egg in France, mate. You'd want to have a bit of money. Good luck with that egg, mate. Thanks, boys. A miracle. <laughs> Second last egg in France. Can't sell this stuff, Paddy. G'day, boys. What's going on? Hey, mate. Now for a bargain, are you? You have to clean me out of my lost belongings. You're not selling it to him. Got a bit of cash to burn? Mate, what's this? Hey. No, 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 no. I got this from a German soldier. It's a book of love poems. Let me tell you, when he died, every hidey in Germany was crying. I want it. Read me one, then. Well, I'm not going to read it to you unless you're serious about buying it. Do you have a wife, mate? Just read the poem. Ich bin du Steyer. Oh, Jack, can you read that to me? Yeah, sure, mate. Beautiful language. Powerful. Um welchen Uhr fährt der Zug? Wo is the Hauptbahnhof? Beautiful. What that means in Australian is that when the wind blows through the soul, the lifeblood within you and the love that inspires me creates life that will bring me back from this war, my darling hummingbird, Ebony. I'll give you three pounds for it. Six pounds. I want to buy it. I want to buy it. Six pounds. No, Billy, you don't have any money. I'm going to buy this. You know that I'm good for it. Put yeah. that money away. Put take it that, or leave it. Don't take that money, Paddy. It's taken my last uh, chance. You've had enough today. Uh, keep. What is it? Forget you saw it. That, my friend, is the last egg in France. We're now the official late-night machine gun disposal crew. Every night, the enemy sets their machine guns up in no man's land, and all these city boys who've never hunted were getting into all sorts of trouble trying to get past. So we showed them how to do it, and now the job is ours. We sleep during the day, which is nice, while everybody else is out risking life and limb. And then we head out at night to make our mischief. And it's all pretty good fun if you avoid the artillery. All my love to everybody, and a big, wet, sloppy kiss to Richie from all of us. Make sure he knows we'd be there if we could. What's the love? Your loving son, Jack.
she give your mum a kiss? Come on. Come on. Come on. Dear Jack, it was so good to get your last letter. Life here goes on. I'm sure you remember young Michelle. Only last week she was married to that policeman, George Doyle. Now, I must confess, I get a bit annoyed. So many young men and women are away with the fighting, but others seem lucky enough to have a life unaffected by war. I must say, I don't like the sound of your new job. I know you'll be careful, but it sounds so dangerous. Here they come! Where's Billy? Vielleicht kommen ja noch mehr. Where's Jack? Lass das Gewehr besser nicht an. Das war aber unhöflich. Die Stimme von dem Engel. And so
So, as you have no doubt been informed, we have each been awarded a military medal for our heroic efforts. Paddy and I are wearing ours proudly as I write from the relative luxury of a small pub in England. We've also had a bit of luck on the punt today, winning a tidy sum in a pugilistic contest. I've got your money. I can pay you. Or you can fight my cousin for four guineas. For four guineas? Mate, for four guineas, I'll batter your cousin, your cousin's father, and your cousin's mother. Mate, uh, Billy's in hospital. I don't think he's in any kid. You mean me? Yeah, you. And you won't last one minute with me. Ten guineas says he does. Fifteen guineas. Fifteen guineas. Go, Will. Yeah. You're on. All right, you're on. All right, um... What are the rules? Bollocks. There's no rules. So far, our medals have earned us a free meal and beer from some lovely English people who seem only too willing to sit and listen to our stories. I must say that after such a long time at the front, Paddy has dropped his guard with the free beer. <laughs> Now, as the army has no doubt informed you, Billy was actually wounded in the recent action. But let me assure you all, my beloved family, that Billy's so-called wound is nothing more than a shallow scratch. While Paddy and I are forced to struggle through London with all adventures paid from our own pocket, the younger brother is relaxing like a king at His Majesty's expense in one of England's finest private hospitals. Morning, Billy. Sister. Thanks again, sister. You're welcome, Billy. Water. Please. Of water, sir. Fire when ready, mate. <laughs> Don't think I can. That's your problem. Don't think. So why they got you handcuffed anyway? Find you. They didn't. I came back. Oh, now 
I meant. That was a mistake. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give He's us obviously this had day enough. Our daily bread and forgive us our if you want to fight, I can send you back to the front. I've already been to the front, and I'm telling you, he's had enough. You Australians, well, I know who you are. Your medals don't count with me, son. Saw some scrawny Herefords back a mile. Wondered who'd be the owner. If there were Herefords, that'd be me. Was heading to Cloncurry, looking to acquire some cattle. <laughs> Didn't think I'd see any around here. No, mainly sugar. I'll give you two pound a head for those animals back there. Pay you in cash. And you'd be Mr. Kenneth. Kenneth's the name. Well, thank you, Mr. Kenneth, for your offer. But those cattle aren't for sale. Drought hangs in much longer. You might not be able to feed them, let alone sell them. Part of the job. Waiting for rain. I tell you what. I'll give you three pounds a head. As I said, those cattle aren't for sale. Not for sale. Fair size herd for a bloke to be working on his own, with just his daughter to help. I can work as hard as any man. I've got all the help I need. And we've got two brothers when they get back. Back? From the war? Haven't you noticed, Gurley? They never come back. Did your dad tell you that, Gurley? Did he tell your brothers when he sent them off like raw meat to the butchers? At least they've got the guts to defend their country, unlike you. It's enough, Jess. Listen, Mr. Kenneth. If you're after a mob of cattle and some land, I'd ride right on through to Cloncurry. My sale yard's around here. Not looking for land today, my friend. Just cattle. Good day to you, sir. And good day to you, miss. All right, Jess, let's back up and get home. I'm sorry, Dad. Hey, I'm proud of you.
proper uniform, even for an Australian. The khaki woolen tunic, the rolled collar, the jacket closed at the front, with five buttons and a regimented pattern. Yes, no, no, please, no, no. This place, it's behaviour like this is going to cost us the war. Fire! Fire that. All right, Billy. No. Billy, we're the same. We wear the same uniform. We do what we have to do, Billy. To win the war. Shut up, shut up, shut up! From here to Berlin, Billy. Kill them all. And you can go home. You can go home. Kill them all, Billy. Now, of course, our old friend the Kaiser doesn't care what you think. But he does fear your resolve. His only hope, that you will flag. Living and dead, they are the king's men. And they ask one thing of us. One final sacrifice remains. Vote yes. Yes for conscription. I thank you. Good of you to be here tonight. May I speak, please? This rally is not a forum for debate. Well, I beg your pardon, Mr. Speaker. I thought it was just the Kaiser who wasn't interested in my opinion. John. You're on your own. Please, Marge. You'll get your chance to speak at the referendum. Indeed I will, sir. But my sons won't be voting. They'll be fighting this war. I thought perhaps you might like to know what they think. They are not the King's men. They are my sons. They are our sons. Our sons. Our sons. They went without question. And still, nobody can tell me exactly why they went. And even worse, nobody can guess when they might be back again. And you want some other mother's son? Against his will? Well spoken, man. Against her will? You insult the very freedom you say we're fighting for. How dare you? How dare you? I've been looked at the chairman in the eye and then spoke. I know my boys, sir, and they would say no to your cursed conscription. Your auntie. My dearest brothers and beloved cousin who is no doubt reading over your shoulder at this moment, I assure you this is our normally serene mother I am discussing. She's not happy. 
She's angry that our family is so far apart. Unless you finish off the Kaiser very soon, I fear she will catch a boat for Europe and do the job herself. I miss you all every minute of every day. I miss our races and I miss our picnics. And as I write, I am kissing the wristband I kept and hope you're still wearing the bands I gave you for luck. The country voted no to conscription, and though it was only a little speech in a country hall, father is convinced that mother's words turned the tide against the government. I'm with dad. Kiss, kiss, kiss to infinity. Your loving sister and cousin, Jessica. Good night, little sister. Dad. Go inside the house, son. What do you want? Just the kettle. What's on your mind? I was just thinking that it'd be easier for you and Patty to die first. You know, mate, when I'm 70, you won't even be 60 yet, so it's probably the way it's going to happen. You know what I mean over here? Yeah, I know you do. We're going to go home together. <laughs> That's what I mean. You still think we're going to make it home? Yeah, I do. I'm going to die over here. I think you should write Mum a letter. Cheer yourself up. Come on.
both in a terrible situation. Oh, where's Jack? What's happened? He told us to run, so we ran. Where is he? Where are the others? Oh, they were still back there. Is he alive? He was when I left him. Usually, we would not do this. In the next village, we have a place where we keep our prisoners. There, you would get a warm meal, and you would feel like if the war was over. When is the bombardier? When is the bombardment? I see you. Hang on, I get him. What are you doing? This is suicide. Paddy, you can't. You can't afford to sit down and shut up. Captain is dead. When is the attack? You, how many men? When does the bombardment begin?
you the middle for that. What? Playing roly poly with some German. Oh. Let's face it. I'm a hero. Patty! Patty! Ah! We're going home, Jack. Storm coming. The boys are dead, Marge. Our boys are not dead, John. The boys are dead. What are you doing with this? I don't know. Billy loved. He still does. Our boys are not dead, John. Billy, Billy just came to me, Marge. He just came to me then. In the room. John, that was just a dream. I don't know what a dream is, but I don't know what the truth is. I'll never see my voice again. I will not let you speak like this, John. My boys are alive, and they will be coming home. My sons are not dead. Mum, it's all right, sweetheart. Back to bed. This is a standard army letter for a very difficult situation. We have no further news. The lads are officially missing in action. I will not accept missing anymore. I am very sorry, but there is no other appropriate word for this situation. My sons and nephew are not missing. They are somewhere. And wherever that may be, the army led them. Please, you are playing semantic games. You think this is a game to me, Major? A game, you insensitive... My sons left this country to fight, to fight, not like some who sat at home growing soft and got promoted shuffling paper. Let me remind you where you are. No, Major, let me remind you. You took our boys. Madam, as I have already told you, there are hundreds, thousands of missing men I have to worry about. And we have only three, so pardon me if I make them your top priority. Our boys, Major. You took them, and they are either alive or they are dead. Madam, please. No, sir, I do not please. You have one thing to do for me, one single thing. Find our boys, bring them home, and we will not bother you again. I wish I had your certainty. It's not certainty, Kath. It's hope. Blind hope. And I won't let the army or that idiot Major forget our boys. I love the way you call them our boys. They are our boys. Patty's dead. I can't go living. Thank you.
I'm just worried that the wrong letter will turn up at home. Jessica there by herself and, uh, and Marge away and me out on the farm. If a letter does arrive from the army, would you let me know first? Dad, it's those men with the guns. I thought we'd seen the last of each other. That was a test run. This time we want more cattle. The last deal was a one-off. And I never agreed to killing people. People get in my way. They get hurt. Same applies to you. Let me show you something. <laughs> Lou. That's for your conscience. We're going again. I found one herd. It's got over a thousand head and only a farmer and his daughter to protect it. I want another one. Bigger. Two thousand head. This is gonna be the biggest cattle job this country's ever seen. Well, mate, are you in? Or is this gonna get ugly? And so we fought, and we won. Some of the brave boys here tonight actually met the enemy on the field of combat. In this, the war to end all war. This is the mayor. State your business. I beg your pardon? An urgent army telegram, you say? To John. Dear Dad, suspect you did not receive previous mail. Sure you'd be here on arrival. Jack and me in Sydney, Repat Ward 320. Please pass to Aunt Kath best wishes regarding beloved cousin Paddy on his Victoria Cross. Oh, oh. And our deepest sympathy to her.
Don't panic. I wasn't panicking. I was just worried about you. You were worried you'd find me outside hanging from a tree. I was worried about no such thing. You needn't worry. I'm too much of a coward. You're not a coward. You're a mother grieving for her son. You do that any way you like. Take as long as you need. <gasps> Just please don't hurt yourself. I want you to do me a favour. Anything. Go to Sydney now. Bring the boys home. I need to see my nephews. They gave me this. Oh, Billy. And then there's this. Oh, Lord, Paddy's VC. It's not much of a trade, really. <sighs> Poor Paddy. How did he? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. I'm so sorry, Billy. It's all right. He went over the lines to rescue Jack. And on his way back, got shot by a sniper. Our beautiful Paddy, always the bold one. Bold? Mum, over there it was just a raffle. It's just as easy getting killed running at the lines as it was running away from them. We're all just meat in a grinder. if you remember me. I remember you, Mr. Kenneth. I remember you too. Those sons of yours come home yet? No. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I had a kind of private proposition for you. Right. Me and the boys, we done all right for ourselves out of the cattle. Got some pretty nice land of our own down south. Mountain country. I got a couple of feisty lads. I reckon it might be time they uh, found themselves a wife, settled down. A partner? A young bloke needs a woman. And I reckon a mountain cattle man would do well to take one that knows a bit about cattle. If you get my drift. 
I don't think I want to follow your drift, Mr. Kenneth. Good-looking girl like that. You should choose her a worthy husband. Let me tell you something, Mr. Kenneth. I don't know you, and you don't know me. My daughter's far too young to be thinking about taking a husband. But when she does, when she's old enough, she'll make that decision herself without any help from you or me. The day I let a woman decide on any bloody thing is the day I load up the rifle and shoot myself between the bloody ears. Clear me bloody brains out. Well, if your boys are of the same opinion, I doubt if any of them will appeal to my daughter. Now get off my land. Just a proposition. No need for rudeness. Dear John, I am here in Sydney with our boys. Jack is not well enough to travel, but I am sending Billy home now. I know you are all anxious to see him. They are so protective of each other, I'm flattered Billy trusts me to wait with Jack. Billy should arrive in Proserpine, July 16. Kisses to everyone. Love, Marge. Now. Promise me you won't make a sound. Don't come out for anyone but me. That's a shotgun, sweetheart. Won't hurt me from there. G'day, Missy. Bobby doesn't make it to his feet. Uh, Thank you too, Bob. I reckon he's gonna make it. I haven't got time for games, Patrick. Oh, Dad. Yes. Dad. 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 There you go. Uh, leave her alone. Just take the girl. Leave him alone. Uh, 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 Jesus. Uh, Dad. Uh, Dad. Uh, Dad. Uh, Dad. Uh, She's yours. Dad! Dad! Clean up this dump Dad! and go collect the rest of my cattle. Dad? Dad!
reaching! Reg, please. There's no way on this earth they would have missed Billy's train. And you know very well there's no possibility that they would have left Richie like that. You can't send men out to help us because everyone's out looking for Delkey's herd. Mr. Delkey came in yesterday to complain about his missing cattle. So I sent Constable Doyle and Constable Johnson out with him to find them. Delkey's place? That's only 20 miles west of us. Billy, stop right there. With all due respect to you and your army service, this is a police matter now. So you're going to give Delkey a police escort and you want us to sit and wait? Billy, that's not fair. Criminals about the police will arrest them, not you! Anyone has hurt my family and I find them, there won't be any arrest. Kath. Kath, let's pray. Nothing's wrong. Reg, I have no prayers left. You remain here, Constable. If anything happens, don't be a hero. You get yourself to Mitchell Township and you find help. Do you understand? What about you? Just do what I say. I'll do the talking, Mr. Dalkey, and I'll thank you not to be too flashy with that rifle. Constable George Doyle of Proserpine Police. I want to talk to you about those cattle down there by the river. Good for you, George. Good for you. <laughs> You're a long way from Proserpine, Mr. Delkey. Good morning, officer. Isn't he? Are you going to come or not? You know you don't run with a rifle. It's dangerous. Order! Order! 
These are the results of my preliminary hearing into the tragic events that occurred in and around Proserpine between June 30th and July the 19th of this year, 1919. I find that on or about June the 30th at Dalkey Station, persons unknown went to the station and there murdered Master Gregory Kennedy, farm worker, for the purpose of stealing the cattle owned by Master Kennedy's employer, Mr. Christian Dalkey. Immediately after that, those same unidentified persons went to the farm of John and Marge Kelly, and there willfully murdered <laughs> Mr. John Kelly. Again, that murder was committed for the purpose of stealing the cattle owned by the Kelly family. I find that immediately after that, Mr. Christian Dalke, Constable George Doyle, were willfully murdered by the same unidentified persons. The unidentified thieves did attempt to murder Constable James Jones, and would have done so had he not made a successful escape from the area of Maranoa River. Had it not been for the timely effort of Mr. William Kelly, who discovered Constable Jones and escorted him to Mitchell Township, I'm certain the police officer would have died from his wound. This brings me to the disappearance of Miss Jessica Kelly. I am as yet unable to determine whether Miss Kelly has herself been murdered and her body hidden, or if indeed she has been kidnapped by the cattle thieves for reasons as yet unknown. As to the whereabouts of William Kelly, no word has been heard of or from Mr. Kelly since he left Constable Jones in medical care at Mitchell Township on July the 10th. Whilst one can understand the anger of our community at these savage murders, I must stress in the strongest possible term, these heinous crimes must not become the source of vigilante action. Hello. Oh. Who the hell are you creeping up like that? Like I didn't shoot you. It's after some water. We'll get it, then get going. Who's your friend? It's my brother. Got himself stabbed. Maybe I could help. Stinks. I told him to clean it. What happened? Got stabbed in a fight with some dumb farmer. Got so sick he couldn't work the cattle. My Uncle Jim wanted me to stay with him and, and said we could catch up once he got better. Cut me some rag, will you? A piece of your shirt will do. How many men you got with the cattle? Men? Oh, there's Uncle Jim's boys and two other cousins. Six, plus, plus me and Patrick. I wouldn't count this one. He's dead. So tell me about the girl. Tell me about the girl. Who cares about her? What do you... What do you mean he's dead? What's you on the rag for if he's dead? I didn't want the rag. I wanted a close look at that knife. It belongs to my father, the dumb farmer. 
Constable Jones. Mrs. Kelly? I have some news. New South Wales police found two bodies north of Broken Hill. Jess? No, two men. These men were both stabbed to death. The knife that was used had your husband's name on it. There was also a rifle found on the scene marked property of Wellshot Station. Mrs. Kelly? The police also suggested that maybe Billy was involved. Mrs. Kelly, I'm here because I feel that I owe Billy a debt. Yes, you do. So go and tell your colleagues in New South Wales to stop worrying about my son and find my daughter. Jack, constable here was just telling me. I heard. Look, Jack, I'm just trying to do the right thing. Said I heard. I told you before, keep away from her. Hey, get away from her. Do you let Tom have a go? <laughs> hey, hey, that's all right. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Don't get too fond of her, mate. Because when we get to the mine, I'm going to kill her. You got that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah? I didn't come out here to get a bloody girlfriend anyway. Obviously not. <laughs> and what would you be talking about now, sis? We sold the cattle. When are we going to split the money? Were you born bloody stupid? Do you want to spend the rest of your life in jail? Lou's told us there's somebody on our trail. I don't care if he's a travelling priest. I want him dead and buried. I'm not doing nothing or going anywhere till I see some money, that's all. 20 quid, right? That's right. Says we can do this. There's only one man. We just ride up, say good day, and then shoot the bastard. Bury him where he falls, then come back here, collect your pay, and you and Ned can piss off where you please. Shit. Jesus, Jack, you frightened the life out of me. Was I supposed to meet you today? Oh, sorry, Jack, I just wasted half a day at the Johnson property waiting for a buyer that never showed up. No, no meeting. There's no buyer either. I just needed you out of your office for a while. Is this a joke? How did they find us and Dulkey? What's this got to do with you breaking into my office? Wellshot Station. Tom Wellshot? Well, he 
he went broke. He took off for the cattle he hadn't paid for. You banked 500 pounds the week our cattle were taken. I had a good week. I sold a mob of Angus to Christian Delkey. No, you haven't sold a thing to Christian Delkey in 12 months. No, that's not right. Your book says it is. That's my private property. And I still don't know what you're talking about. Police know about Walsh Hill. Jack, I'm truly sorry for what you've been going through. What are they going to find when they start digging? More dead bodies? That'll be three missing herds. One cattle agent. Let me show you something. I've been through your drawers, found your gun. I didn't know they'd kill anybody. Maybe not the first time. Jack, please. The second time you knew. You don't know these people. I know people. I know more than enough about people. Jack, the war's over. You can't go around shooting people. Relax, Peter, I'm not gonna shoot you. Mess that'd make. There's not a thing in this book a good lawyer can't explain. Outside of this office, you can't prove a thing. You surprised me, Peter. I thought you'd come with me to the police. Stay here all night if you like. But if you're here in the morning, I'll be the one calling the police. She'd be 19 by now. Who? Keep shooting! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Did you see that? That 20 quid is mine! Oh, rubbish. You're <laughs> gonna hit him at 10 foot. Lou! Lou, can you see him? Right! He's running right! Shit. Reload. Reload! <laughs> Keep going, mate. Get him, get him! I know! Yeah. You got him. Lou! Where the hell is he? Oh, can anyone see where he is? Look, just keep your eyes on him. Mum was trying to kill us. Oh, really? Help me! 
Ned, throw us your bullets. Ned, help me. Ned. Come on! Just fight fair, you bastard! Okay, 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 okay. Where's the girl? I don't know anything about any girl. Okay, okay, oh. She's with Will. She's with Will. I swear to Christ, I didn't touch her. I swear to Christ, I didn't touch her. They're taking her to the mine. They're gonna kill her there. You need me. I'll take you there. I'll show you where to go. Where's the mine? Oh. It's a couple of hours south of here. I can take you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll find it. Ah! Behind a tree, mate. I'm just saying goodbye, all right? I can't hear myself think. Settle down. Finish her. <sighs> settle down, all right? You settle down. Settle. Oh. You bitch. Oh, Jesus, Will. Come here, you stupid bitch. Stupid! I let her go! You shoot me! You can take the money and walk away! Just let her go! You want her? You come and get her! I just want the girl!
the money, leave the girl, and walk away. You know, if you're dead, I might as well kill him now. She is dead. If I hear you, she is dead. If you touch any more of my money, she is dead. Hear me? Dead! You hurt me, Billy. I'm There were so many ways we could have returned home. I don't know whether it was to save Mother from my appearance or simply to avoid the police, but we chose the long way, through the desert, north along the Darling River, away from people and their questions. We headed home the way we came.
The bodies of the cadets were never found. Peter Burns, our local cattle agent, was assumed to have died of a heart attack. There were rumours and innuendo, but no charges were ever laid against my brothers. Time passed and people forgot. But in that time, Mother and I both healed. My brother Jack spent many years running the family farm. In 1923, he married the widow of Constable Doyle and together they raised a whole new clan of Kellys. My brother Billy carried his wounds from the war and the secrets of the mine within himself. And there, along the banks of the Proserpine, he would hunt for kangaroo as he did before the war until other wars carried him away.